Hey everyone, Manuel here, and in today's video we're going to be doing a what's in my camera bag. And a couple notes before we get into it. Number one, this is going to be my first video off script, so I apologize if I rant a bit. I just noticed that in past videos I've been kind of, you know, more lively compared to recently where everything's scripted and I'm trying to you know, just sound natural on camera and that's been very hard. So I thought I'd, you know, give this a try and what better video than, you know, what's in my camera, very low pressure. I know all the products I'm using and it'd be easy to just, you know, shoot one take. So uh, let me know what you all think down below and don't forget to leave a like and a comment. And note number two, while I'm at it, is uh, I will actually be switching out of the bag I will be showcasing today. And the reason for that is, although I have been using it uh, for the past two years and I loved it, I realized that when I'm actually out and about shooting videos, um, I prefer having a kind of a sling, sling style bag, since I can actually reach into my side and pull out a video camera while I also have the main film camera that I will be shooting with. So it's been easier to uh, record that way than just you know having a second camera, like two cameras hanging around me, or having to pull off my backpack to you know, grab something out or asking a friend to grab something out. So that's the reason why I will be switching out. Um, I still recommend this bag if you're just a regular film shooter and don't have a YouTube channel. And yeah, I, I'm just trying to get away from um, backpacks in general because I end up over overloading myself and I, I kind of want to try to cut down on that weight. So uh, before I ramble on any more, we will get into the video and uh, yeah, follow you on there. All right, so before we get into this video, I apologize for the lazy setup. As I said, this is more of a laid back kind of filming. Um, but this is the Foxhound standard issue. <laughs> Sorry, I can't finish that. This is actually a brevity bag um, that I ripped off the patch of and placed this Fox logo on it. Favorite video game, except for Metal Gear Fire. That one sucked. But um, keeping it to the bag. Um, this has been, this is an older model from a couple years ago, so I can't speak to what's coming out of the, you know, the online shop at the moment. But this has lasted me a good amount of time. It's taken quite a beating and it's held up for the most part. Um, the padding right here is getting a little thin. I still remember it being a little thicker, but it is still, still has some life there. It's been carrying around a lot of uh, weight. Actually, let's quickly weigh this guy right here. How much does it weigh right now? So, whoop. come on, let's weigh this. Let's let's, what the hell? That is not a measurement I like. Let's quickly, how the hell do you switch measurements on here? Hold on, let's get this figured out. Pounds. Pounds because we are in the States and this is America, damn it. This is 11 pounds. So yeah, 11 pound, I don't know if that's a lot, but it does start to weigh on you if you carry around for any given amount of time. But yeah, sticking it to this bag, um, it's lasted me quite a while. Um, I guess we should go over the features. It has, um, like I said, this side pouch here that you can reach in and grab a camera body out of um, if you just pull off one strap. Um, this does not come standard. This is a patch I sewed on there. As I said, I'm a big fan of modifying your stuff. Um, the front has these, I don't know, bags right here. That you could put uh, business cards in, but I don't really use them all that often, honestly. And if I do, I forget that they're even there. Um, this was pretty cool. Um, if you have like a lens cap, you could just pinch it on there. Um, this one specifically is a 52 millimeter and 67 uh, thread. And if those aren't your cameras, camera threads, they also have a 58 millimeter right here. So you can just kind of easily flip that out. That was really cool. It's not a feature I see a lot of. Um, but also they had what I used a few times, which was these uh, straps down here for your tripod. And this was cool in theory, but I don't know, having to um, have the legs sticking out like this. It always ended up being that I would try to squeeze into tight spots and end up getting stuck and just be hilarious. I'd look like a just a giant freaking nerd. But anyways, um, yeah, let's move 
I know you guys want to start here because that's where all the camera stuff is, but I want to start back here. So let's just start with the stuff I don't use. So this is kind of funny too because it has so many zippers and so many pockets. I know mean, you want to think it by looking at how small this thing is, but um, actually a lot of space and there's been a few times where I've gone into security or something and they forgot to check a bag. But yeah, this is where your laptop would go in, except um, like I don't like carrying around um, my laptop on shoots. I feel like I toss this around too much for me not to eventually break it. The only time I would carry around my laptop is if um, I'm going to hang out at a friend's house and I want to edit. But it does fit in there. And actually, let me grab it real quick. Grab it. Do 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 do. This is the pause of the video. Pause of the video. But yeah, this goes fits right in there. Um, I think that's a. I want to say 15, 15 or 17. But yeah, this is my not Apple. And it goes in there. Fits pretty pretty nicely. Like I said, I only carry it when I'm gonna like hang out at a friend's house and wanna edit or something. Let's see if that's centered on the camera. Okay, that's good, okay. But yeah, um, just goes in there. It just feels a little weird too uh, when you have something carrying around there and it, the padding, uh, you can kind of feel it. So, yeah. not a big fan of that. But moving on, to this top uh, pocket. Um, I have a few knickknacks in here. Um, this is a WD My Passport uh, Pro. It's I think I want to say Godox, not Godox. That's the flash thing. But this this is uh, basically where I offload all my video files when I'm traveling or on a shoot, and I want to back up um, storage. So I would just pop this in here, turn it on, and it would transfer the files. This has two, I believe, two terabytes. Uh, let's check. I don't think it has it listed on here, but this is two terabytes of uh, memory and that's like more than enough for me. It was cheaper than the more popular rugged uh, version and a lot, you know, it, it, it's it's I've had that for three, three, four years now and it's it's been working out pretty well. Um, Kleenex, because uh, when you're working with models, you never know when they might need that, I guess. Um, tape, because why not? Um, this is actually we'll talk about this a little later. And um, this guy, which is my uh, logo, my art logo, that was designed by Rita the Raven. I recommend her in case you're ever looking for those kinds of things. But it's kind of surprising. Actually, let me pull out the camera right now. So, yeah, normally what goes in here is either like a, my A7 III or my, my mic, or sometimes if I'm just shooting, it could surprisingly even fit like my Pentax uh, 645. That's what I used to do back in the day, you know, when I would carry like a 35 millimeter and a 120. Um, this would fit right in there, but obviously it ended up being super bulky, but it was a nice option to have. You can't really go down further than that. A nice little isolated pocket. And I would probably be okay with like the next level up on Brevity's website. Like the, I think it's the rucksack or something, but um, like I said, I'm trying to step away from backpacks and we'll see how that works out. I might end up having to get that other one uh, down the road, but for now I want to try the messenger style because I like the idea of just quickly reaching, reaching into my side for my uh, A7 III just to film, get you guys that extra B-roll. Um, this pocket contains all my little knickknacks that I don't want to just get um, tossed around in here. Um, I have a spare battery for my a7 III. Unfortunately, this no longer works with it because uh, Sony is super anti third party. So they put it in their, in their latest firmware on the a7 III that um, these older Wasabi batteries would not work because it would damage um, the battery, which is such bullshit. Um, I'm not a big fan of companies telling you what you can and can't use. You have those have to buy a brand name, and I'm not a big fucking fan of that. That shit sucks. All right, so real quick, we're gonna jump cut back to this because there was some stuff in here. Um, sorry, ignore that this is open, but don't be afraid. The only reason these don't work anymore on my A7 III is because they were locked out on the latest firmware update. But I know they only did that so I can buy Sony brand batteries, but instead I bought uh, RAF power batteries 
because I trust them on their power banks. But anyways, uh, moving on, I have uh, my bag of weed. No, I'm just kidding. This is actually a um, little bunch of dicks. No, it's, uh, <laughs> sorry. I um, just say these things to make myself laugh. But these are, um, crap, I'm blanking on the word. I know you guys already know what, th what these are, but these are for when I go to concerts and I like, you know, having my hearing preserved. So, you know, I just always have a, have a pair of these or a fucking film canister of them. I'm blanking on the word. I'm probably gonna put it up right here. Ah, so this is what happens when you take a shot before filming. But anyways, moving on. I also have pretty much a a piece of cardboard with uh, printed film stocks since I like um, having these on the back of my camera when I'm shooting it just so I remember uh, what it was I was shooting on that camera as, a, as, I, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware us film photographers have really bad gas and it helps just kind of differentiate what you're shooting with what and yeah it's it's there in case I need it and for this right here, we are gonna go through, I guess we'll go through this. Okay, so this is an eyelid um, gel stick, I wanna say. And this is from specifically for my Sony a7 III. Um, you know when you get your best bits of dust on the sensor, um, you can either send it into clean or you can do it yourself. And since I am puro punk, I like to uh, just you know, dab it on here. To, oh, at least that's how it works. So you dab it on here to kind of prime this to get off the bits of dust. And then when you, you know, dab it on the sensor, you dab it back on here. And as you can see, this is all dust that has been previously on my Sony. And um, I know I've seen mixed reviews of this because some people have reported that the newer ones have like some smudging that ends up on the camera sensor. That hasn't happened to me, but I do want to make you aware of that. Um, I try to avoid, this is available on Amazon, but I try to avoid buying from Amazon because not a lot of people realize that Amazon is n practically not as, not as different as eBay. So a lot of your products there are like actually sold through third parties and Amazon's just a go-between. But yeah, I would prefer uh, to purchase this from the website in case you're interested in picking that up. It's, it's, it's served me well for the life of the Sony camera that I, purchased and yeah it's, it's, it's better to, to do this uh, DIY instead of paying 50 bucks every time you need your sensor cleaned and if you're shooting mirrorless it's it's yeah it's kind of essential that you kind of get into that um this is my SD card wallet mine I can't remember what uh, where this was on, online but I like to organize this by this being my new cards and these being my uh, spent or or actually no these are my new ones, ready to film, and these ones are the ones I intend to offload onto um, my computer or my mobile hard drive. And yeah, so these are all kind of varying ages. Um, I tend to stick with SanDisk. Um, <laughs> these have been abused to various extents. This one's partially coming apart, but it's still working. I'm obviously not gonna use it, but you know, just in case in a pinch, I like to keep several cards. I'm actually using 64 nails for the Sony and I need intend to buy more, but for right now, this is more than enough. It also has space for the micro SD cards and that's for both my GoPro that I'll show you later and my uh, dash cam on the car in case uh, something happens and I wanna save that footage. I like to have extra SanDisk um, memory cards. But yeah, that's completes this one, put this off to the side. And then, what else we got in here? <sighs> Battery case. Um, I like the flat profile of this. I like that it comes apart, not that I ever do that. But since uh, my batteries tend to go out either on my Pentax 645 or my flashes, I like to carry this around just in case. I'm gonna switch over to Energizer because I know they sell like a different brand that lasts a lot longer, but for right now, these are uh, Insignia, got these from Best Buy. And the way I have my uh, battery storage set up is if they're facing the, you know, the tip is facing the top, tippy top, that means they're new and ready to be used. But if I have to put in uh, older batteries in here, I'll try to flip it downwards. So that way I know it's spent and not to use it. 
Um, that's just kind of the system I've been working on right here. But that's that. What is that? Um, there's a side pocket here. Um, it's good enough for a water bottle if, you know, you carry one of those smaller ones, but I like having a reusable tumbler and whatever, uh, Visco Girl one. And it's not big enough for that, but sometimes I will stick an uh, A7 or my Olympus XA or a power bank in here, but it's always like a little extra storage. And as I said, this does offer you the ability to pull out a camera body from here on this side, but I'm not a big fan of that. I don't know. It's not, it's not really used that often for me. Okay, moving on. Okay, no, wrong pocket. So, moving on in. Actually, let's uh, scoot in. So, moving on in. We got these little trinkets. I still haven't found a purpose for this side or that side. But right here in the middle, we have my pens and uh, markers. Uh, this is something you see in a lot of film photographers' uh, camera bags just because it's easy to mark uh, if you push or pull film. And if you have tape like this, um, I like to tape it on the back of some cameras to let me know what film I'm using if it doesn't have that little pocket for the label. Uh, but yeah, this is good to have. Good to have. Uh, let's see what else I got in here. Okay, so let's pull this all out. Okay, so yeah, it's a little mesh pocket right there. Um, as I said, this is the older brevity bag, so this might not even be the current setup that they have right now. But starting off, I have this uh, film lead retriever um, made by Matin. I have one here, that's why it's labeled one, and the second one's always at home. But yeah, you just one and two, and then pull it out. And I used to have this all the time because what I used to do back in the day when I first started shooting film and I only had one camera body, I would shoot halfway through a roll, decide I wanted to use a different film stock, and use this to take that out while labeling it what shot it was on on the camera and then reloading it and shooting up to that spot while covering the lens and i don't do that as often as anymore but yeah this was good to have especially when i was shooting with friends and they had accidents where um they would accidentally roll back the film inside and needed to retrieve it so this was good to have um this let's before i get into this um this is a pc sync cord um, I've been tr I'm gonna try to do some film with uh, strobe lighting, so I kind of needed that, and I just keep it in here because uh, it would probably get lost anywhere else at home. Okay, putting this off to the side. This is a Kodak auto release, and I got this specifically for the RB67 since it doesn't have a timer on there, and that's used in conjunction with a this. It's a that. This is um, shutter release cable. Um, a, lot of you know, a lot of you know this as a necessity for night photography when you're shooting on a tripod just to prevent camera shake. Um, but as I was saying, with the RB67, since it doesn't have a self timer, I will use this. And it makes the most annoying noise, so I apologize in advance. Okay, there we go. So, how this works is you bring it out all the way there, input or place your. Place your. Yeah, like that. So you place it like that, and it's supposed to give you 10 seconds, and be prepared for the most annoying sound ever. And bam. You got your selfie on the RB67. So I have that on there because that's, yeah, that's something I eventually want to use. Uh, not at the moment, but... Um, it is in the works. I need to shoot with that RB more often. But yeah, this is good to have for night photography. Give me your stuff still. Oof, let me stretch, stretch my legs because it is getting, getting lambre, lambre. Sentimento me las pies. And it's English, that's like my legs stiffened up or whatever. I don't care. Okay, yeah, this bag. So. Wait, real quick though. This is the little pocket separator, whatever thing. Moving on to this, yeah. Like I said, this would normally be where my A7 III sits, but 
and I would usually have like whatever film camera I'm shooting like strapped around me. Um, but for the demonstration purposes of this video, we're just having it here. And this is my Nikon F3, which a lot of you are a fan of. Um, this was actually really sentimental to me. It was gifted to me by my um, then girlfriend for uh, for a Christmas present, and it's not really. I didn't really change anything about it. I, I actually did. So this kept coming off on the back, so I put on this um, magnifier uh, eyepiece and attach some thread lock on there. I think thread, uh, thread lock purple because it's the lightest one. So I haven't had it fall off since. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, this power on and off uh, snapped off. So it's permanently stuck in the on position. And I have this little button right here to make it easier to shoot. I'm not gonna press it now because like I said, it is on. And like I said, um, I usually like having these so I can replace this with whatever um, film I'm shooting, but it's a little harder now because um, this is sticking out a little more, but no regrets, no regrets at all. Um, this is also a leather strap I got from Etsy. Um, leather, since like I said, this is a sentimental, cam sentimental camera, I decided to kind of splurge a bit on the camera setup just because it is sentimental. So that's been quite a bit of time. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter f1.2. Um, the focus thread came off so I just stuck a piece of duct tape just to give me a little better grip and other than that it's been pretty all right it was kind of stiff at the beginning but I sent it in for a CLA even though it would have been cheaper to buy a new one just because I hate throwing things away and um yeah it's been pretty all right um I've been meaning to shoot with this camera more but I don't know it's sentimental and I hate for anything to happen to it uh for any of you who've seen my birthday video, I did drop it when I was taking a selfie and it took a pretty good hit right there. But, you know, it's still going, it's still good. You know, just a little airborne. Oh, but one thing I did want to mention, this isn't going to be a review of the camera, but since we're already here and I know a lot of you guys like it, um, one issue I am having with it is every so often, um, it would just won't fire. Like it'll be halfway through a roll, batteries are still good, but it won't, fi it won't fire. And I have having to open and close it and uh, rewind the film a little bit for it to, you know, reset or whatever. But it's the strangest thing. So if any of you know what's going on with that there, um, just let me know. Yeah, uh, moving on. Um, okay, yeah, I don't see a lot of this. But this is a film case hold holder made by Zade. It's for 35 millimeter. And yeah, again, a little splurge, splurge expenditure here uh, this has whatever film i intend to shoot or like my high grade film that i want to shoot and right now it has some ilford hp5 that i bulk loaded some t max 100 which i don't know why some people hate it so much like, i love the fine grain and some portra so i usually try to have two color two black and white even though i always end up preferring the black and white and like i said this is all handmade by zade i'll attach his Instagram down below in case you want to support him. But uh, this holds four. I think the current one he's making is three. And this has lasted me, well, since I started film photography, so like about three or four years. And no complaints on it. The leather is still holding up pretty well. There, There is a small crack on here, but um, I think that's more for me not uh, conditioning the leather as it should be. Uh, for those of you who have a lot of leather goods, one thing I barely found out by, I think his name is uh there's a youtube channel called the rose anvil and i was watching one of his videos on doc martens and he talked about conditioning the leather so i bought some mink oil um to condition some docks i bought recently and i also decided to hit up all my leather goods which included this uh camera strap right here and that's why the leather is darkened right here and yeah um there was a little smudge right here i don't know if you can kind of see it it's not as visible as it was before, but it was just like a light brown uh, smudge there. But I conditioned it with leather and it just darkened the whole thing, even the leather inside. And yeah, highly recommended. This is good stuff. I like to have this around. And uh, next is the Olympus XA. So <laughs> I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this camera. I know like I always get downvoted or disliked to hell whenever I say anything bad about this camera. But... 
you know, like I said, love hate relationship with it. Um, I think it's a nice backup, especially if like you're shooting a uh, color on your main shooter and you pull this out. Um, it's good to have some black and white or vice versa. Um, it doesn't have a film holder. So like I said, I, I get a piece of tape, uh, put it on the back and just mark down what I ever have, whatever I have. In this case, this is um, Kodak Gold. And I put hard press shutter. So <laughs> I had the issue. So the, the reason why this is there is because I had the issue where I was uh, pressing on this a little hard because I thought it finally broke. But the reason was that um, this, uh, the batteries in here weren't uh, properly secure. But as I found out, there was actually some rust on the cap here. So I had to remove it, kind of file it down a bit so it can make proper contact there. But this is a pretty all right camera. Um, good journal. I know, like I said, get downvoted to hell whenever I say anything bad about it. But I don't like... I don't like it as a main shooter, even though it's a really good uh, vacation slash travel camera, since you're not having to uh, constantly reach into your camera bag. Um, the was the rangefinder patch right here was a little bit dull, so I had to put in that piece of black electrical tape right there uh, to give a bit of contrast. Um, there is a video video I did on how I did that, um, but yeah. Even though I like to talk crap on this camera, I always make sure to have one on me because it is very pocketable and friendly. I just always feel like I'm going to break it. But yeah. I also hate how it only goes up to 100, 800 AI, so, and you can't really choose your shutter speed. But, you know, it's a good camera to have on the back end. And, oh. So this is a Union card. Actually, I shouldn't show the front. But this is a Union card. Um, <laughs> so unrelated to film. But we are starting to union at my job, and this is just something, yeah. I, I, I was not getting into that, because you guys don't like politics, apparently. But anyways, this is my GoPro. It is in a cage right now, because as some of you know, uh, the audio quality on this is shit. So I have it in a cage where I can attach a Rode VideoMic Pro. Not Rode. A Rode, like some kind of Rode Mic Mini. Uh, external mic to just attach there. Uh, the thing that sucks about it is that I can't just press uh, the record button without it recording properly. But it also has um, an ND filter here, so to help with recording. Since I'm shooting outdoors, um, the footage can easily be overblown, so this kind of helps with that. And I recommend that cage. It's a pretty good one. And then this is the GoPro Hero Black version 5. I want to say and I have a little piece of a uh, protector there. But yeah, it's been good. Like I said, I use third party batteries with it. They last a little bit longer than the original. Good camera. Um, I have this with it as well, which kind of goes in conjunction and it'll be like my little POV for when I'm shooting with a camera, but I also got a chest mount for it. So I'm probably going to be using the chest mount a little more often than the hot shoe mount. But good camera, good camera, backup footage, just in case you missed something. Uh, moving on, this is a RAV Power battery pack. Um, there's no identifying logo on it because I would like to put stickers on everything. Um, high quality sticker, really shitty quality. This was me just testing out like uh, <laughs> how certain things wore faster because I wanted to see what kind of sticker brand I wanted to went to. And obviously I'm going to go to with this one because this one's been on for the same amount of time as that one. And it hasn't really worn out. This one sucks. But yeah, it's good to have just in case um, you're shooting and you need to either load up your GoPro or your phone. But most often it's because a lot of my friends have Apple iPhones and I don't have any of that. So I just give them this so they can charge up and not be too mad at me for being team Android. But okay. Um, Sakonic light meter. So <laughs> I know a lot of people here have uh, apps on their phone and that's good if that's all you got, you know, they, they can work in fairly good conditions, but I always like having a dedicated tool that its sole purpose is to do the thing it was made to, in this case metering. Um, this is the L758 and honestly, I wish I got the uh, Sakonic 308, I think it was, the little smaller pocket one, just because it is more pocketable. This does have a bunch of features that I don't end up using, like um, the spot meter and um, this little ability to kind of retract the bulb here. I normally just use that 
and uh, set my ISO. But this is good to have because like a lot of my cameras don't have um, dedicated light meters like my RB67 or the Shiga 124G. So this is good to have. I like getting my exposures um, how I want them, especially because recently I was shooting with my one of my cameras. I think it was this Canon A1 program, and it was giving me vastly different um, light meter readings, and I felt like I was going crazy, like I didn't know how to read light anymore. But then I had one of these, so I checked, double checked um, the camera's light metering with this, and this ended up being closer to what I what I was um, expecting the light meter light meter to be to be reading, and. Um, yeah, because you gotta remember that a lot of these cameras are manufactured to read, I think it's like either 30% or 15% gray. And that's fine when you're shooting like an overall scene, but for me, when I'm shooting portraits, I like to have this under the chin and get an exact light meter reading. Or if I'm trying to expose for the shadows or the highlights, like again, this, this allows me to do that instead of taking the overall gray reading of the scene. But yeah, this, no, no real complaints. Like I said, it's just not pocketable. Um, you're probably better off with a 308 if you're just shooting portraits and stuff like that. Unless you're doing landscapes, then go with that. But yeah, breaking this camera thing up. Let's do this. Oh no, let's not take that out. Okay. So, taking this out. This is just a regular divided little camera pocket thing. Um, Forever used to sell these individually, but now they don't, which kind of sucks because you, you think if you ripped it or something happened to it, you can't just get a replacement one. But yeah, this just goes out there, and I, I took this out because I also have this uh, to the side, which is a rain cover for my camera. And I'm hoping to use it, but every time it's raining, I'm working, and it just hasn't happened. But just in case, I would like to shoot in the rain and not damage my Sony or my cameras. I have that on the side. I usually also have emergency blankets over here in case I'm hiking and something goes wrong. I can have that. But yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. I think that's it. This is, this is kind of a... I feel like I should say more. It's kind of anticlimactic. But that's the video. Like I said, I'm switching out of this one to go on to my uh, Think Tank uh, messenger bag. Just because it's if I, if I wasn't shooting you for YouTube, uh, this would probably be perfect. Um, so this camera bag already has a lot of history attached to it, and I do get sentimental. But um, it's time to move on, and we will be shooting with something else. Uh, I made a mess over here, but yeah. If you like this video, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm sorry, there's not a whole lot of B-roll attached to this, but I wanted something laid back. Um, oh, hey. I was looking for this. I want something a little more laid back. But yeah, that's that's gonna be the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's see what you expect next. I am thirsty now, so I'm gonna go get that. And yeah, there we go. Enjoy. Until the next one. Keep chasing the light.